With more Western support, a greater focus on mobilization, expanding the defense industry, and building fortifications, Ukraine will not only be able to continue to hold its ground, but will also be able to create the conditions for counter-offensives in 2025, wrote Max Boot, a Washington Post columnist and senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, in his column. We have difficult months ahead as Ukraine struggles to hold its front lines and rebuild its shattered energy infrastructure. The West must show that it will not waver in its support. Ukrainians who have borne the brunt of this terrible conflict certainly will not, the author noted, commenting on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's new visit to the United States. Boot emphasized that given the changing fortunes at the front, Ukraine is forced to contend with a possible reduction in foreign support. It took months of delays for Congress to approve a $61 billion aid package for Ukraine in April. That money will run out by the end of the year and there is no guarantee that Congress will approve another large package. Ukraine could be in a particularly dire situation if former President Donald Trump wins. Trump, in his only debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, rejected a call to declare his support for a Ukrainian victory in the war, the columnist noted. He added that President Joe Biden should give Zelensky permission to use Western weapons systems to hit military targets deep inside Russia, citing the American-made ATA-CMS missiles previously provided to Ukraine. Let us recall that The Telegraph previously wrote that the Ukrainian armed forces could launch a counter-offensive in 2025. It was noted that it is quite likely that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is aimed at forcing Russia, at least partially, to divert troops from the offensive in Donbass. American officials suggest that Russian troops have already been partially withdrawn from Crimea, Kherson and Zaporizhia oblasts and may be redirected through the occupied Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts to counter the Ukrainian armed forces Kursk offensive. Ukrainian sources also report that Russian troops may be withdrawn from the Kharkiv front. American intelligence emphasized that the Kremlin sees only Donald Trump as its own candidate. On September the 23rd, one of the representatives of the U.S. Office of the Director of National Intelligence stated that the Kremlin created a lot of content using AI to promote its candidate for the post of the head of the White House, Reuters reports. Experts say generative AI learns from past data to take new actions. To do this, it will use content such as text, videos and photos created by humans. A US intelligence official said that Russia creates such content far more than any other country in the world. The Kremlin already has a good understanding of how the US election system works. One of the latest pieces of evidence for this is the events of July the 9th, 2024. Then the US Department of Justice thwarted the Kremlin's plans to dump pro-Kremlin posts on the internet through official accounts of individuals and legal entities. Then a video was supposed to appear on the internet about Harris allegedly running away from the scene of the accident, but one of the passers-by witnessed this and posted the footage on the internet. However, that video was edited by a human, not an AI. Beijing will use the same content, but not to promote its candidate, but to change Americans' opinions about China itself. Iran is using AI to create new resources to feed fake news about world events. It should be noted that Democrats are increasingly worried that pollsters are undercounting Donald Trump's voter support, rating his prospects of winning November's presidential election as much higher than headline opinion polling figures suggest. While most national surveys show consistent though moderate leads for Kamala Harris, the Democratic nominee, some supporters are unnerved by the small margin of her advantage in three northern battlegrounds, Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, which are deemed must-wins in her quest for the White House. Although some polls have shown the vice president with leads of between four and six points in Pennsylvania, generally judged the most important swing state, Others show Trump trailing by smaller deficits. Narrower gaps separate the two in Michigan and Wisconsin, where Harris's lead is just one or two percent, according to several different recent polls. 
underpinning Democrats' fears is the knowledge that Trump greatly outperformed predictions in all three states in 2016 when he narrowly won them en route to his election triumph over Hillary Clinton and in 2020 when he was pipped by Joe Biden by far smaller margins than forecast. Russia has launched an unprecedented campaign to recruit volunteers for the war against Ukraine as there is a shortage of manpower at the front. The Kremlin is still afraid to announce a new mobilization. The well-known Russian telegram channel Vichik OGPU, which is believed to be connected with the Russian special services, reported about the mass recruitment of Russians. According to the channel, all of Russia is flooded with crazy propaganda for military service. Russians are called to fight by television and other media, all sorts of advertising platforms on the streets and even machines selling metro passes. In addition, military registration and enlistment office employees are on duty at the most crowded places, urging people to sign a contract. Citizens who agree to take part in the so-called SVO are promised huge payments by Russian standards and other bonuses. In addition, according to reports from those who have already gone to the front, the commanders of some areas have been agreed to carry out an action. Come yourself, bring a friend. Now, for one soldier who signs a contract and convinces a person to go to war, they can give him a long-awaited vacation, and in some places they even promise a reward, the Russian resource reported. At present, Russian army fighting against Ukraine is suffering from a severe shortage of manpower and supplies. Traitor of Ukraine? who went over to the side of the Russian Federation, Tatiana Montian, complained about the poor supply of the Russian armed forces, due to which soldiers are forced to either purchase what they need themselves or ask volunteers for help. There is nothing to fight with. I am here buying up tabs by the dozens because, except for tabs, there is no connection. And this is the whirlwind special forces unit and not just some ripped up warriors. Well, that's the situation. What can you do? There is nothing at the front. With such a dynamic development of the situation at the front and in the rear, we can even lose Belgorod. Well, I can't get my head around it. Either don't say that we are going to defeat everyone or do something so that at least something appears at the front, said the fan of the Russian world. She also spoke about the personnel shortage in the Russian armed forces.